Hi, it's Thomas Nord. I want to tell you something uh, about the properties of, of some bone rings you can harvest inside the mouth or outside of the mouth um, or about allograft bone rings because I want you to become a bone ring master. Be clear about the properties of each bone ring. Here you can see uh, six different kinds of bone rings, uh, autogenous bone rings from different areas. And uh, the last one, the white one, is the allograft bone ring. You can say that um, everywhere out of the human skeleton you can take a bone ring. Some places make sense, some don't make sense. The first Three of them, which I mentioned here, make sense. The other two don't make any sense, but I will show it to you and tell you why. Uh, the first bone ring on the left side is taken out at the retromolar area at the mandible. It's where uh, the wisdom tooth, for example, stands or the second molar is. Um, you have to, as you know, if before you get out the whole bone ring out of the bone, you have to prepare the implant bed inside and then after that you go with the tree fine for the whole length into the local bone and get out the bone ring. So please keep in mind if you want to start with the bone ring at the retromolar area, you must be able to place an implant at the wisdom tooth area. Sometimes the patient can't open the mouth wide enough, sometimes uh, you can't see enough. So it's not a region or an area I would recommend to start with for beginners. Uh, the cortical part is a little bit more, the spongious part is a little bit less. If you harvest the ring the right way, from the top and not from the side, um, and if you have a panoramic x-ray where you can see the uh, canalis mandibularis with the nerve, then there shouldn't be any problem of risk to harvest the nerve. There's nervus uh, alveolaris inferior and nervus lingualis, but if you do it the right way, there shouldn't be any problem to harm them. You can take out uh, about Two or three rings at the retromolar area should be enough. The next slide shows uh, the, bone ring, the bone ring from the chin. I would say if you want to start to harvest bone rings, then start with bone rings from the chin. Why? Because the patient can close the mouth. You just have to pull the lip a little bit down, then do the cut in the right way. There's no... Um, there's no, there's, there's no risk to take a lot of skin and uh, here. If you do it the right way, there's no problem of any chin drop or something like that. It's no problem. Um, you have to cut it the right way. Perhaps I show it in some other videos. And then you prepare the ring, not in the middle, because in the middle sometimes there's the symphysis or symphyse in Germany. You can see it on this slide. There's a lot of hard bone in the middle. So always go to the side to harvest the bone. Um, you have a very good overview. You can take about two rings at each side. Um, there's a little less, little bit less um, part of uh, cortical bone, a little bit more of spongious bone, and um, yes, it's the area or the region for beginners. So start with this. This is a bone ring from the palatinal process of the maxilla. Um, this is for advanced um, bone ring harvesters. <laughs> um, you should do it when you have some experience with other bone rings. It's a very, very good bone quality, but please um, only harvest rings where the tooth above is missing. Otherwise, 
the risk is very high that you harvest a little bit of bone and a little bit of um, dental root and you don't want to harm any roots so only where the tooth is missing and when you get out the, the ring out of the processus palatinus you have a very good bone quality and um, with a little less um, of a cortical part, more spongious part. Very good, I can recommend it, of course. As uh, some of you know, I was in the German military hospital in Hamburg for five years for my education. And in the military hospital, we uh, had to go to the Iliac Crest to harvest any bone. So that's what I did as well, of course, in the military hospital. Uh, J graft and so on. You, it's another discussion is if, if you need any earlier crest bone. Uh, in my opinion, it's very, for very large defects in cancer surgery or traumatic surgeries, not for so little augmentations in implant surgery. But uh, so we took some rings from the iliac crest. Keep in mind, it has a control ossification during the embryogenesis, so. That means we have a high rate of resorption. In the literature you can see about 30% of resorption if you take bone out of the iliac crest. That's why I choose a 9mm bone ring. Normally it's uh, too much for us. We take 6 or 7mm diameter bone rings, not 9mm. If you have a high resorption rate you have to take the ring. And, um, so I would say the access to the iliac crest is very easy. Just one cut, a small cut. You can move the skin a little bit. You can take out a lot of bone rings uh, from the iliac crest. Um, the pain later is not as big as uh, the pain when you get out uh, very big parts of the iliac crest. So you can forget about the pain. Um, but you can't do it in your dental office normally. You need, um, um, how do you say, a room for, for special surgeries. So, um, yeah, you don't need Iliac Crest, I would say. But you can do it if you want to. So, this is one of uh, very exotic bone rings taken out of the tibia. In the literature, um, a lot of uh, oral maxillofacial surgeons, uh, when they need huge amounts of uh, spongiosa or bone, they get to the head of the tibia because there's a large area where you can take out bone. There are no nerves uh, in the side and no or any anatomical structures you can harm. Um, one day I was working in Hamburg, I was talking to Bernd Giesenhagen, who invented the bone ring technique. I talked to him and said, hey Bernd, I want to take a ring out of the tibia. And he said, okay, that's great, I'll come to you. So two weeks later, uh, he got to Hamburg, 400 kilometers, and we did this surgery together. But if you have a look at the second picture, I wouldn't recommend to go to the tibia. It's a very, very soft bone, like SpongeBob, <laughs> and you can't use it. You can do it, but it's not necessary and it doesn't make any sense. So this is the only picture I have of a bone ring from the tibia. This is the last one, without any blood, because it's uh, already a processed bone, it's allograft, that means it's not a pick or um, bovine or something like that. It's allograft. It's a human donor, but another individuum that says somebody else.